Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a really different video today. I have been really restless at night with a lot of thoughts just about life and where I am in life. This video is going to be a little vulnerable but I just felt really compelled to share some things that are on my mind. So I hope you're here for that. And maybe this will uh, connect with someone out there. Uh, and if not, maybe we'll just have a good chat and I'm cool with that too. So I'm gonna be talking about finding yourself again after 40. Yep, if that sounds good to you, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think. And as I always say, even though this isn't the case with this one, if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy, but um, you want to be part of a community that is always growing, evolving, changing and learning. If that sounds good to you, definitely consider joining this community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. love self-improvement. I love to learn. Um, if you didn't know, I'm a teacher. I love learning new things and I love growing. I consume a lot of content about self-improvement on YouTube. I have books, Audible, things like that. I don't know. I've always been a very reflective person. I'm feeling especially reflective at this time of my life and feel on the brink or cusp of something. I don't know what that something is. You know, I'm claiming that it's something good, but I, I couldn't sleep last night. And one of the things that I was thinking about, well, what sparked it was I was listening to Mel Robbins and she's the one that talks about the let them theory. And I did link it in that video. If you didn't see it, I'll link it in this one too. But she did a video about reinventing your life. And she talked about life as being just one big road trip and having these kind of milestones that you look forward to along the way uh, to your destination. She uh, equated it to a road trip that she took when she was a child. One of the things that she pointed out was that the rear view mirror in a car is smaller than your front windshield because the best years of your life are ahead of you and not behind you. And it made me think about how oftentimes I live in the past about certain things and it's really hard to let go and not looking into the future, at least for myself. You know, when I think about my kids and things like that, I do think about their futures, but if someone were to ask me, where do I see myself in two years? I could not tell you. And I think it's because I've just been kind of going with the flow. And a lot of that stemmed from me becoming a widow back in 2017. So it's been six years, right? And I think because of that, in some odd way, it makes me not want to plan for anything because that really turned my life upside down, you know, and it's not, I, I don't even want to put out there that like my marriage was perfect or everything was going in this trajectory because it wasn't, but I didn't expect this. So if someone were to ask me that, I don't have an answer. I really and truly don't. So thinking about that and, and really diving deep into it, it's like I am just going with the wind and I'm on autopilot. And I think that being able to go with the flow is great. You know, me being able to move forward every day, I think that's great. But I don't know what road I'm on. Like, yes, I have a career. Yes, I have a home, you know, yes, I have kids in, in direction like that, but I don't know where it's going. And I really had to sit down and think about it. Oftentimes when I, I look at other people in my age group and even younger, I feel like 
wow, like they're so mature. They, they really have it together. And I don't feel like that. And someone could be looking at me and thinking that I have it together. And I'm like, eh, you know, I'm just kind of making it. And the people that I look at as goals or having it together, they may not feel like that inside. So I'm going to stop doing that because I only see what people allow me to see. And I, I can't make those types of uh, assumptions. You know, I think we all may have ups and downs in how we feel about that. And we are very, very hard on ourselves. As I continue to watch more and more content about self-improvement over the last few weeks, I've come across some wonderful channels of women who have revamped their lives, who have changed their confidence levels, changed their bodies. And these channels are wonderful and very, very motivating for me. However, when I look at these women, they're not even 30 some of them they're young you know and i'm like wow that is amazing to be able to figure that out at that age but what about me like what about us what about people who are in their 40s or mid 40s or 50s who want to revamp their life is it possible is it too late? You know, because I'm looking, I'm like, I'm 10, 15, maybe even 20 years older than some of these women that I've been watching. And what I realized is that there is no age. So whenever you want to do something, you can. But I wanted to kind of share this for people in my age group, because when I started to look up content about revamping in your 40s and things like that. I really didn't see much. I saw things about style and there's some financial things, but I'm more so talking about like the inner struggle and the inner work and the mindset that it will take. And I think that it can be a challenge if you are older because you've been doing things a certain way for a long time. Career-wise, I've been a teacher for 20 years. That's a long time. If I want to change or do something else, how do I go about that? Because I don't want to go back to school right now again. You know, I, I'm, I'm not there. So how does one do that? I want to share some things that just came. I mean, I woke up out of my sleep and just started typing in my phone like, all these notes about things that I want to do. And maybe if you're in my shoes or feeling this way, maybe these ideas will help you or you can revamp them in a way that suits your life. So I hope that sounds good. And so if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my phone because I just want to make sure I cover everything. So this might be a lengthy video, but I hope you will stay till the end. So we all have roles in life. As we get older, you know, sometimes those roles change and they increase. So one of my main roles is a mom and that's like my number one role. But I put a slash next to that and put widow because those go hand in hand. Every day I feel like I am impacted, you know, especially with the pressure of being the sole person to make a decision. And I know there are many single parents. There are many widows and widowers. So I know I'm not alone, but it, it is a different sense of pressure when it's just on you. And then I also feel a pressure of making sure that I'm raising the boys the right way. Like that pressure from above, the pressure from God, the pressure from Mark looking down on me, like, you know, making sure his kids are raised in a way that he would be proud of. So I do get a lot of anxiety from that. And that is a huge role in my life. I'm also a teacher, another huge role. And that has been a big role for me because I started teaching in 2003. That is really all that I know. And I've been a classroom teacher for all of that time. I haven't been out of the classroom. I haven't been an administrator. I've known one job. And even though the job is different every year, it is the same job. And it's really ingrained in me, even though my confidence as a teacher, believe it or not, 
is not what you probably think it would be. And I mean, things are always changing in the field. The kids have changed. Curriculums changed. During COVID, I really felt like I didn't know what I was doing. So teaching is a huge part of my life. And then I'm also a girlfriend. I've been in a relationship for a little over two years. And, you know, that was a new role. So all of those things, those are the three main ones. And, you know, we have other roles. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, all that. But I'm talking about like the three main ones. And like I said, the, the two being a mom and then the teaching, those really, really, they consume me a lot. But when I think about those roles, I always feel like, well, where is Kara? Like, what happened to her? Where does she fit into this? And a lot of times she doesn't fit in. There's no time for her. In a way, I feel like I've lost myself within the roles that I've taken on as an adult. But there's still this little person inside of me that's the same. Like there are things that I remember from kindergarten. Like there, there was, they're just things that I remember being anxious about, you know, cause I'm an anxious person. I remember being an anxious kid. Like there are things about me that are still there. There's that little girl that's still inside. And all of us have an inner child, you know, we all have that. I guess my issue is like, how does that inner child get nurtured? So like, you're not completely lost so that you still have something left for yourself and to give yourself. And then that part of yourself is still developing. And, you know, it all comes down to balance, as I said before, but it's a lot easier said than done in my eyes. It's just not that simple. As I get older, you know, I still sometimes cannot believe the responsibilities that I've been trusted with, especially, especially with the boys, you know, and I, I'll never forget when I had Marky and Mark and I were in the hospital and you know, we were there all of what, two days and they were sending us on our merry way. And I'm kind of like, I'm not ready. Like, that's it. Like, do you trust us to leave with this little person, you know? And I remember driving with Marky in the, in the car, in the back seat and being like, I cannot believe like I have been given this great responsibility of having this little person, this little human being that's depending only on me, you know, cause I, even though I was like 30, I still felt like a kid. So I, I just think those parts of us, they just don't change and they don't go away. All right. So with all that being said, I want to share kind of like a roadmap to finding myself again. And it doesn't have to be like a reinvention. It's not like I'm trying to make this great transformation, but I do feel like there are just some things that, that need to change in order for me to be the best person that I can be and in turn be the best person that I can be in the other roles. And because I feel like they all really depend on me feeling like a full person. Yeah. So let's go with number one. Now, number one, I've talked about, and I'm actually going to start working on it as soon as I stop filming this video, is the vision board. I've already started to gather some ideas for pictures, and I don't think it's going to be anything huge. I think I'm just going to do it maybe on an 8 by 11 piece of paper, something that I can like slide in a notebook or keep with me. Because I don't need it to be, at first I was thinking about getting like one of those trifold science things. And I'm like, okay, that, that's too much. Like you don't have to do that. On my vision board, I really want to focus on, and I don't want to make it too structured. I want to think about where I see myself in two years, because that was the question that I could not answer for myself. Where do I see myself in two years? Because I can't, not can't, I can, but I don't want to continue to go through just these motions of life, living on autopilot and not being here in the present because I am extremely blessed. Like I have so many good things in my life and I really want to be able to enjoy them and be fully present with them. And I can't do that if I'm just going with whatever way the wind blows. Like flexibility is one thing, you know, just blowing all over the place is something else. And that's not 
where I want to be. On my vision board, I want to include some of my fitness goals that I, that I have. I did go to the gym today. I want to include some career goals. I don't think I was meant to be a teacher this whole time. Um, so what, what would be next for me? I really don't think I'm meant to stay a teacher. I don't know what I would do, but it's time to start thinking about it. And once I figure that out or have an idea, what will be the exit plan or strategy to get there? Where do I see this YouTube channel going? You know, am I going to be talking about eyeshadow palettes forever? I don't know. I really don't know. And I know I talk about more than eyeshadow palettes, but you know what I'm saying? Like, is makeup really the thing? I mean, I love makeup and I've come to really love it. But is, is that it? I need to start thinking about those things. What are the things that I see happening for my home? I told you all like a year ago that I was gonna be getting a beauty room because I had to get my basement waterproofed. And I just started getting back on the kick of getting that basement together. So it's been a year. That's procrastination. I know it was money too, but that wasn't the issue. It was a lack of organization and a lack of a vision. So I do have a dumpster coming today so I can get anything out of here that doesn't need to be here. And I'm proud of that because I am saying that by the time school starts, I want my basement usable. I want to start moving my makeup out of here so it is not the priority of my bedroom. So what do I see for my home? There's some things, other things I want to do too. Where do I want to go? I started traveling with the boys and they were great. I want to get them somewhere else. So where is that somewhere else? Um, if you were here with me from the beginning, you one of the things that I want to see are the Northern Lights. I want to go to Iceland. You know, I want to go in 2024. That was always the plan. So I'm, I'm just trying to think. And, and I just want to make it whatever I want it to be as far as this vision board. And I want it to be specific. That's what I want. So I, I'm going to start getting some pictures printed out and I want to get that going. So the vision board is number one. And I, I think it is the most important thing because it's going to be a roadmap for this trip. And it can change. We can take detours. Maybe the destination will change and that's fine. But I, I just want to have something that I can see that will keep me focused. The next thing that I want to do to revamp and that I've been thinking about is what is my personal style? And I know that that may seem or could seem unimportant, but it's not. I think that how I look and how I feel in my clothes impacts how I feel about myself. Just like I, I may not be at the weight that I want to be at right now, but the fact that I've been to the gym a couple times this week, like I don't care because I know I'm making small changes to get to the goal. Whereas when I'm not going and I'm not exercising, I'm more so complaining like, ah, oh, I got to work out. Oh, I got to get in the gym. I mean, my workout situation is more for my mental health, but it is going to improve my physical health as well. And I think improve my confidence, but also I will like how I feel in my clothes. Now, one of the things that I think impacted all of us is that during COVID, I was just wearing like Adidas track pants. I was wearing leggings. I was wearing graphic tees. And don't get me wrong, I love my graphic tees. But with going back to work, which was last year, I was wearing my Adidas track pants a lot. Now, I, I, I'm still trying to <laughs> figure out my personal style. Sometimes it's like a sporty spice. It's like I'll wear my Adidas breakaway pants and have like a cute bodysuit or something like that. But then sometimes I can't find anything to wear and I have all these clothes. And it's like, okay, I have clothes, but they're not things that I want to wear. And I just think I need to... Thank those clothes for their time and their purpose in my wardrobe and donate them. And that's what I've been doing. I've been doing like this rolling donation to Purple Heart. I, I want my clothes and my style and my hair. I want all of that to reflect who I am. That's why I combed out my locks because 
although I love them and I, they were easier, you know, but this is me. Like the frizzy hair is me. That's all I can say. And I'm, I'm still, you know, trying to learn how to do some more low maintenance styles and things like that. But there is not one regret that I have about combing out my hair because when I look at myself right now, I'm like, that's care. Like, I just feel like it was a part of me and that could change, but it was just something that I really missed for these almost two years that I had my locks. When I think about my clothes, I really want to have a wardrobe where the pieces in there are multifunctional. I don't want to have like work clothes per se and going out clothes. I'd, I'd love to have things in my closet where I can wear them in a way where it's good for work or then I could change it up and wear it out. I don't want to have like all these clothes and separate wardrobes for this and that. I would love to have more multifunctional items. I, I really love denim. And I think I'm more into like solids, like solid colors, cream, white, beige, well, beige is like cream, denim, black, gray, you know, things that I can mix and match. And so I don't know where I want to shop. <laughs> I, I, I have to figure all that out and, you know, get rid of some of the things that don't fit. I probably don't need so many graphic tees, you know, and I'm just thinking about how I've changed, you know, but like the other day I was wearing something and I'm like, I really don't like how this t-shirt looks. I don't know. I'm just kind of evolving in that way. I don't think I've worn any type of heels since before COVID. So I would definitely have to figure out, uh, some that are somewhat comfortable. So anyway, number two is for me to work on my personal style. I want to paint my nails. You know, I want to wear earrings. I don't want those things to feel like chores. I want those things to feel like expressions of me instead of something else I have to do. And that's what it has been feeling like because I'm always doing so many other things. Uh, the third thing that I'd like to do a little bit more is spend more time with my friends. I recently had a get together with like my core group of friends and we all just walked away feeling so full. Like one of my friends was like, seeing you all on Saturday really fed my spirit. And I was so touched by that. And one of the things that I said when we were there was, you know, when you have these friendships that have lasted for like 20 years, we have seen so much uh, of each other's lives and been through so many experiences and then to still be here that is just something that I can say I've taken for granted and I don't want to anymore because everyone doesn't have that everyone doesn't get that and the fact that this group that we have that I just think I really want to treasure it and I know, well, one of the, the things that is the blessing is that because we've all been in different spots with relationships and where we've lived and things like that, we are very flexible with each other. But it was so nice to come back together uh, last week and just be, just be together, you know? And it was just great. And like, of course, we have a group chat and things like that, but it's just not the same, especially when this is a group of people that I used to see all the time and we used to sleep over each other's houses and they helped me comb out my locks the first time and all of that. So I, I really want to make more of an effort to spend time with them and not sacrificing anything else, but planning it, you know, it can't be a spur of the moment. Hey, we're going to go have lunch, but it has to be something that we plan. And I just would like to have that you know, a little more often. It doesn't have to be once a week, doesn't even have to be once a month, but we go a long time without seeing each other and we are within an hour of each other. So that's one thing that I really felt like helped me get back to the old me, you know, and, and that's what I'm talking about. Or I, I'm not even saying the old me, but just the, the me that's just Kara, not the mom, not the, not the teacher, just me with the things that I like to do. The fourth thing is to really have an outlet. And I do. And that's, 
you all. That is my channel. It's between that and listening to music and my walking, you know, working out. And I want working out to kind of move up in the ranks, but my outlet is really YouTube. I felt like YouTube was the thing that I had that was just mine. And I know the boys are a huge part of it, but what I was doing when I first started my channel just wasn't gonna be sustainable, which was waiting till they went to bed to film or being so tired when they went to bed that I would fall asleep with them. I would get up in the middle of the night and film makeup videos at like two in the morning. And I remember one video in particular where I feel like my hair looked a hot mess and my eyes were red. And I was just like, but I just had to do it, you know? And that's not ease. That's not what I wanted this to be. So the boys being a part of the channel, it's still mine. And I know they're a huge part. I don't ever want them to feel like they can't come in the room when I'm filming or interrupt me if there's something that they really need and that they can't get on their own. You know, And they're funny, they are funny. I also know that as they get older, they're not going to want to even be bothered with it. So I, I can see that. I can already see that happening. So like Marky doesn't really want to be bothered with it. He tries to help me close out the video. Like, are you done? Like, you know, or else he's going back, you know, in his little office or where he's going. And August is usually if he needs something. I mean, they just come in really when they need food for the most part. So I, I'm not upset about it, but I, I do think it's important to have some type of outlet where you can be yourself. And I think that's going to look different for, for everybody, you know, and I wouldn't be able to tell anybody what their outlet is, but this is mine. And I hope that you all know just how special you all are to me. Cause otherwise I wouldn't feel comfortable even sharing this. I mean, some of y'all might be like, okay, we just want the makeup, you know, but it has become more than makeup for me. I, have talked to you all about so many different things while, you know, putting on makeup. I've talked to people on Instagram. You know, a lot of us have things in common with our kids. So this is my outlet because I don't see my friends that much. And maybe I'll have another one, but this is my outlet for right now. So that always helps to bring me back to just me, to who I am. And the last thing that and it kind of goes with uh, an outlet is for me to spend some time alone. I really enjoy my time alone, especially like if I'm taking a walk, if I'm going up to the track, it allows me to process and think, whether it's thinking about the work day, thinking about things I need to do, thinking about something that happened, if there's something I'm thinking about with the boys or scheduling, it just allows that. One of the things that happens during the school year, see, I'm kind of getting this time now because the boys are at camp, but sometimes, oftentimes during the school year, I'll work and then, you know, when I get off, I mean, it's hard for me to leave on time because I can't get here or get to work early. It's really tough. By the time I leave work, the boys are pulling up to the house and then I'm right at the next thing. So a lot of times I'm not really sitting down until 8.30 or nine o'clock at night. And when I do, there's nothing left. Like I don't have a TV show left in me to watch. I don't have anything left. I just kind of crash. So I, I need to find a way to figure that out. Um, there have been times where I've been able to get up really early, which I do like doing. I like getting up before everyone else gets up so I can just kind of get myself together. I would like to do some more work with meditating because I have a lot of racing thoughts. And I think that is something that will be really helpful. For me, I'd like to learn how to kind of quiet the noise in my mind, but I'm always thinking and I'm always going and that's really not the life that I want to have. And so I'm trying to slow myself down and with that, trying to slow Mark and August down because they just live in this world where everything's done in a flash. You know, especially with technology. And I just didn't grow up that way. I grew up having to wait for things. I grew up, if my parents, I wanted them to do something 
I had to wait. If I wanted to buy something, I had to wait. If I wanted to talk to one of my friends that moved, we wrote letters and I had to wait for them to come back. <laughs> or, you know, we didn't have call waiting when I grew up. So I have to wait till my parents got off the phone. You know, all of those things, it has made waiting not as big of a deal as it is for people growing up now. So I, I really want a slower life. I know that's one thing that I want for sure. Oh, and let me say this. And, and the last thing was spending time alone. I want to really take care of myself. And I talked to you all about that when I was doing my hair. Stop looking at doing your hair as a chore or something that takes up time. Enjoy it. Enjoy the hair you have. The reason that I don't enjoy it is because I feel like Anything that I do for myself is at the sacrifice of something else. And that's not a good feeling to have. So I'd rather just hurry up and do something with my hair. You know, I want to paint my nails, but I got to sit and wait for them to dry. I can do my feet. My feet are done. But sitting down to do my nails is tough because usually there's something I'm going to need to be doing with my hands, like cooking or something like that, where this is not going to be feasible right now. But I, I really want to insert that element of taking care of myself. I even heard the term being like romanticizing your life. And I wrote down, oh my gosh, y'all, it'll be a separate video. But I heard uh, someone say that in a video and I just stopped it. Like, what would that look like? How would I romanticize my life? Oh my gosh, all these notes. That'll be another video if you're interested in that. But I, I just think there's so many little things that I can do to kind of improve this kind of stuck kind of feeling or this feeling of something needs to change. There's so much that can be done. And I just want to give that like feeling of hope to anybody who doesn't have it. So overall, like these five things that I talked about, the vision board, uh, spending time with my friends, finding my style, having an outlet and spending time alone so I can take care of myself. I think all of this really translates into building a routine that incorporates my role as myself along with all the other daily roles, you know? And I, I think that I can find time to do it. Like I'm already busy. It's funny because at work we'll have these meetings where, I don't know, we'll have to incorporate something and they always preface it with like, I don't want you to look at this as one more thing on your plate, but it is, and okay, it is another thing. But like, I can incorporate this, you know, it's worth it. and. I always say we make time for the things we want to make time for. I just need to start feeling that making time for this is important instead of putting it on a back burner because that's, that's what we do. And I know I'm not the only one, like that's what we do. I don't have that routine yet, but I, I'm hoping that you all will be here as I figure it out and share it. But that is going to be, I think crucial for me is building a new routine. And I think the summertime is actually the perfect time for me to do it because I have time alone. I have time to really think. And then I also have time to figure out how will I incorporate this when work starts back up? It's not that far off. I go back in the middle of August. So I've got some time to really think about this and figure it out. And I just wanted to share how I'm feeling with you all because I, I'm done with hanging on by a thread. I'm done with autopilot. I'm done with feeling like I look raggedy. I'm done. Like I'm done. I'm done with feeling bad for not working out because the day just got away. I, I'm finished with that. And I hope you are too. And we can be done together and on on to this next phase. So I hope that if you are in my age range or wherever you are, if you're watching this, whatever age you are, that you feel inspired because I really feel inspired. I feel a fire right now that is not going to be put out because I know that 
life and my life, I just don't think like life is hard. Like life be life in, but I don't think we were put here for all of this struggle that's happening. There's just some things that I know I can simplify and change. And I think it really does come down to this roadmap and building a routine that is going to work. And right now I've built a routine that works for everybody else. And me, I'm just left like on the doorstep somewhere. And so that's going to change. I hope that this is helpful. And if you are feeling like me, I don't know. I hope you take something away with it. I know again, it's a different type of video uh, for this channel, but I hope you're here for it because I'm going to be sharing it and I'm really, really excited. So add any tips or ideas that you have to this conversation, because like, that's where my mindset is right now. That's what I am like totally focused on right now. And I'm excited to see where this is going to go. So thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another one. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you're being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself. Nice. Stay safe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Oh,